in the first course in the series, we really teaching everyone that's in the course how to build this particular model template. So it's really focused on like heavy Excel use, learning lots of Excel skills. And in this one, what we're focused on is more... Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of What's New at CFI. My name is Ryan Spenderlow, and I'm a Senior Vice President here at CFI. Today, I'm joined by my colleague, Duncan McKean, a fellow subject matter expert, and we're here to talk to you about our new FPNA course, and it's called FPNA Professional Model Roll Forward and Analysis. Hi there, Duncan. How are you today? Great, Ryan. Yourself? Oh, I'm doing really, really well, thanks. It's always really good to have you on the What's New podcast. Um, this is a great course that you've been one of the driving forces behind uh, releasing. Can you tell us a little bit about the course? Yeah, first, yeah. The first thing about it is it's it's a part of a uh, series of three courses. So this is the second one in the series, and um, in the first course in the series, we really teaching everyone that's in the course how to build this particular model template. So it's really focused on like heavy Excel use, learning lots of Excel skills. And in this one, what we're focused on is more like procedural, like, you know, what do you actually do every month as you get new data and how do you manage your files and how do you roll the models forward each month? So we we really want to try to teach, you know, a procedure for workflow that FPNA professionals can really incorporate um, into what they do each month. Yeah. Sounds like an absolutely critical part of um, FPNA analysis and model building. So I imagine it sits yeah. right at the heart of what an FPNA professional does. Um, yeah. I imagine, as you've alluded to, that it's a good idea to have a set procedure to follow each month for, for new actual data. So what are your recommended procedures that we cover in this course? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, the first thing that we rec let's, let's I guess start about what we don't recommend. We definitely would not recommend um, <clears throat> just using one model throughout the year and overwriting it as you go, um, because then you're not you're not going to have um, backup copies of everything for prior months, and then you wouldn't know. Also, if you're constantly overwriting things, then you wouldn't know what your forecast was, say, two months ago. And sometimes that can be interesting to go back and look at. So, we're definitely recommending like. You know, the moment a new set of monthly data comes along, then we would make a copy of, of the previous month's file, rename it. Usually you're going to rename it like, you know, like the, the like incorporate the date at the end of the month somehow. Like if you're going to follow yeah. year month day, which is very, very common. Um, so then you'd have like, you know, 2024, 630 for June 30th, and then you'd roll it forward to 2024. Um, like say July 31st, so 731. And that's a that's a great procedure to follow year, month, day. So that's the first bit is constantly rolling it forward. And then what we're going to do is basically, you know, show the learners how and where to put the data in and, and how to interpret it. And we want to, <clears throat> as we're putting the data in, we want to be analyzing it in that moment. Like, because that's the moment when you're when you're physically putting it in you're comparing it to what you thought it would be, so that's the right time to be to be analyzing it, right? When you're putting it in, yeah, mm -hmm. it makes sense. And and thinking about that data that you've alluded to there, Duncan, do you hmm. only focus on quantitative data or information in these FPNA models, or do you do you also incorporate qualitative data and information? Yeah, it's a great it's a great question. Definitely, um, the tendency for people is to focus more on the quantitative data and really just the numbers. But um, what you'll generally find is you want to think about your audience. You know, it could be um, members of the executive team, members of the board. You know, they want to know what's underneath the numbers. They want to know, mm -hmm. hey, what's the story? <laughs> what happened to lead to the numbers moving like they did? So, um, you know, the qualitative information is definitely important and you, you definitely do not want to make mistakes in the quantitative information. But what we what we've done with the design of this model is we've put a place for more qualitative information or like commentary. So beside each graph, there's commentary about, so you can write in exactly, you know, what happened. You know, perhaps you could say um, you know, something like prices were lower than we expected because we're really trying to penetrate the market and we needed those prices to get the volumes that we're aiming for. So that that's an example of the qualitative storyline that the, the executive team will really want to understand. Yeah, I was, right? was so, going to say that qualitative 
information and data that you can add as an FPNA analyst must be really useful to the decision makers in your organization, right? And that's where a, a real value add element comes to it. Yeah, it sure is. Inf- um, it sure is important. And also, um, you wouldn't believe how many models there are that really don't provide that qualitative information anywhere. It might come out in the conversations as you're presenting the models, but we wanted to actually provide one piece in the model, like I said, right next to the graphs, where you can put that and you should put that. So we've incorporated that in there. And again, that's something that you would probably want to make that commentary, like right in that moment where you're putting in the numbers and analyzing and realizing what happened. Yeah, for sure, Duncan. That makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. What do you actually do with the FPN models at the end of each fiscal year? Um, mm-hmm. Presumably, you have to roll the models forward by a year? Yep. Yeah, you definitely do. Um, you roll them forward. And what ends up happening is that, um, so, um, like, let's say that, well, actually, it's good timing because we're approximately in the middle of 2024. So, in that model, we will be right now. Um, forecasting 2025, and we'll have 12 months of forecast for 2025. Well, as we get closer and closer to the end of 2024, um, we will have, you know, honed in that forecast for 2025. So it's getting better and better and better every month or closer to reality every month. By the time we get to the end of the year, that forecast for 2025 becomes our budget for next year, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Because we've had 12 months of, you know, honing in, getting it closer and closer, and uh, it becomes our budget. And then we we want to, we need to index the years forward, but we also need to move the forecasts, you know, like for instance, um, um, what we were forecasting for 2026, well, that label will get moved now to 2027, and we'll need to put a new forecast in there. So, yeah, you definitely rolling it forward is probably the easy part. <laughs> like just inputting a new number into the cell, that that's like the easy part. But you need yeah. to make sure to transfer everything properly so it's lined up with the right labels. And then you need to come yep. up with one brand new forecast for, you know, a brand new year that you've never forecast before. So it can be. So when you do get to the end of that year, it's a little bit more of a time consuming process. But mm. I guess, again, um, we wanted to walk the FPNA professionals through that. You know, so when they get to that stage in the year, um, again, it's it's a procedural thing, and they know exactly how to go through it without any hiccups. Gosh, listening to you describe the process, Duncan, it's just a really good reminder about the modeling complexities that FPNA analysts are faced with, um, mm-hmm. and perhaps other financial models aren't so much. So, um, a, again, a reason why a course such as this hopefully is so valuable to our um, to our to our learners. Um, Yeah, we really hope so, for sure. They are complex models. They really are, like, you know, monthly and, like, constantly rolling forward, comparing what you thought it would be to what it actually is. A lot of complexity in there. Yeah, so I hope this resonates with them, of course, like this. Yeah, I'm I'm sure it does, Duncan. And so thanks ever so much for um, joining us on this episode of What's New at CFI. Just a reminder, um, Duncan's been explaining uh, our new course, FP&A Professional Model Roll Forward and Analysis, and it's part of a a three-course series. So, Duncan, thanks ever so much for coming along in this episode. Hopefully you'll come back um, and let us know about what the next course in the series is sometime soon. Definitely, Ryan. Thanks so much. Awesome. All right, then. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. FinPod is brought to you by Corporate Finance Institute, the number one rated online provider of finance and banking training, certifications, and productivity tools.